I think I just went into complete shock. I, I, I had to keep it together. <laughs> just feeling that impact. I said, I think I was just shot. It felt like a, a huge tenon, a huge baseball, just the force of it going through my stomach. And then I looked down, there's blood everywhere, and I knew I was shot. And so I laid there and composed, composed myself for a minute. And I said, okay, I can't stay here. I'm going to die um, or I'm going to bleed out. Um, it hurt so bad. Um, but I knew I, just, I didn't want to die. I wasn't ready to die. So I... I just kept pushing forward and trying to use my best instinct and tried to stay low and and I was being trampled and it was so hard to move, you know. Everyone was stepping on everybody. And unfortunately I had to step on people just to get to where I needed to get to. And I knew once I jumped over that fence, I'm like, okay, I'm a little closer to the exit. And but the shooting wasn't stopping. Take your time. Take your time. So I didn't, I didn't know if I was gonna make it out because I didn't know how much blood I had lost. The closest hospital I think was Sunrise and he didn't take me there because he knew that he didn't think I would make it. So he's like, I know I have to take you to the trauma hospital. He's all, you'll be treated right away. And you know, are you gonna be okay? I said. I said, I'll, I'll be okay, just please get me there. And the people in the car were, were putting pressure on my, on my wound because I had the other leg wrapped. And um, they were the ones that called my, my friends and family um, because I was, I was in no place to call anybody. So they helped you know, tell people I had been shot and where to find me. And if it wasn't for that cab driver, I wouldn't be here. So, and I don't know who he is stomach right here and then and then my leg. And, and what, what keeps you so strong? I just have faith. I have to stay strong in my faith. I want to be here. I'm not ready to go.